I'm Adrian and today we're taking a look at Hunter's fighting style in Star Wars The Bad Batch. The Bad Batch on Disney Plus chronicles the adventures of said Bad Batch, or as they're defined by the show's Kaminoan scientist, medically defective clones whose cellular mutation enhanced traits desirable in a soldier. In other words, the members of the team were genetically engineered clones with heightened abilities, Hunter being specifically engineered to have heightened senses. He can even feel electromagnetic frequencies, and as Tech puts it, while maps can be wrong, Hunter never is. So in other words, just by taking one look at him, you can see that the series sought to answer the age-old question, what if Rambo was a clone trooper? And boy did it deliver in spades. Seriously though, Hunter is an awesome character in his own right and the show takes inspiration from all the best places. The goal of these videos is to figure out just how many fighting styles our combatant is familiar with by analyzing the specific moves featured in their footage and pairing them with the martial art or fighting style which most aptly represents those moves. There's a huge amount of crossover in martial arts techniques, and a technique that is present in one fighting style may also be present in another, such as a roundhouse kick being present in multiple martial arts. But in order to not give combatants multiple fighting styles for the sake of variety, I have instead opted to list the most apt fighting style that best represents that particular character, technique, or set of techniques. Also, there are various degrees of knowing a fighting style, and although one may know elements of something, this doesn't mean I'm saying the fighter I'm talking about is a master in every style I mention. Since we are dealing with a character from Star Wars lore, I will further clarify that in this particular video, we are not going to be analyzing him through the lens of fictitious fighting styles in Star Wars, such as the various lightsaber forms or its version of hand-to-hand -hand combat known as Terakazi. If you'd like to learn more about those fictitious styles, you're welcome to check out how many fighting styles does Darth Vader know. In Hunter's case, we're going to be analyzing his techniques from a real-world standpoint and not incorporate any fictitious fighting styles. I highly recommend watching Season 7 of Clone Wars and Bad Batch as this video will analyze footage from those series. That being said, I will keep plot and story details to a minimum, but do take this as your spoiler warning. Fighting styles that Hunter may know in any other form of media, such as in comics or novel form or game series, do not count. Without further ado, let's take a look at how many fighting styles Hunter knows. Hunter is a skilled soldier with incredible hand-to-hand -hand and weapon skills. One such hand-to-hand -hand technique is his useful grappling move, known as a rear naked choke. Chokes have plenty of variations, but in their most basic sense, they prevent air or blood from passing through the neck. In Hunter's case, he's executing what is known as a blood choke in judo. You accomplish it by wrapping your arm around the neck of your opponent and then grabbing your own bicep. This results in pressure being applied to the neck on both sides, preventing blood flow to the head, causing unconsciousness. Hunter at one point finds himself pinned on the ground and has momentarily disabled his opponent. We will find out exactly how he does this later on. He takes advantage of the short days to execute one of Judo's most popular throws in media, the Tomo Nage. You grip the opponent high and fall backward into a roll. Once the opponent is off balance, you plant a foot on the opponent applying strong pressure while rolling on your back with the opponent flipping over you and landing on his back. In Hunter's case, since he's already on his back and his enemy is off balance, he simply uses that leg to throw him up and over him. He soon follows up this move with yet another technique from Judo. Within Judo's throwing techniques, there are hip throwing techniques, also known as Koshi Waza. In this case, Hunter's executing a technique known as a Nogoshi, or major hip throw. The point is to break the opponent's balance by lifting with the hip and bending forward. Note how Hunter uses his hip to lift his opponent and flips him to the ground. Hunter does modify the technique a bit because he chooses to roll with him. Hunter is also not opposed to throwing people around as well, whether it's right into a wall or over his leg, his judo training no doubt coming into play. But besides being a well-versed grappler, Hunter is an excellent striker as well. Let's start out by looking at some of his kicking techniques. Display right here is a great demonstration of perhaps the single most powerful kicking technique in Taekwondo, the side kick. The knee of the kicking leg is raised with the heel tucked in. The leg is then straightened towards the target, driving the heel into it. The drive provided by the supporting leg, combined with the proper aligning of the hips, is what generates a tremendous power in this kick. In Hunter's case, note how a single side kick propels his enemy backwards several feet. And this isn't just because it's an animation. Sidekick demonstrations typically end in very much the same way. Check out Scott Atkins' step and sidekick, for example. Next up, we got one of the most useful and easy to learn kicks in Taekwondo that is also readily seen in other martial arts. The legendary, the sensational, the awesome. <laughs> You 
You execute it by lifting your knee and then pushing forward by extending your leg. In Hunter's case, he uses it to create distance to set up his next attack and to also push a droid to the ground before firing at him. A pretty cool variation to the typical roundhouse kick is executed by Hunter right after his aforementioned push kick, and it's the jumping roundhouse kick. In much the same way that you execute a jump front kick by lifting your knee and then jumping with the same leg you will be kicking with, instead of throwing a front kick, you throw a roundhouse kick. Due to the added torque of jumping, Hunter spins right through the technique. This kick is known as a front sweep kick. It's an excellent technique for tripping your opponent, just like Hunter does. What's pretty cool about this show is just how well animated it is. In case you've ever been interested in animation, you can learn so many aspects about it on Skillshare. For example, before any of this gets animated, it has to go through the storyboard process. And with Su An Chan's informative class, you learn all the different components of creating an excellent storyboard. From finding the main theme of your story, to creating an effective beat board, which summarizes your entire scene in one panel. I especially enjoyed the unique illustrations she created to teach each concept. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Most classes are also under 60 minutes with short lessons, so you don't feel overwhelmed and can learn at your own pace. And if you'd like to learn about something other than animation, Skillshare offers classes on several other topics, including martial arts, photography, video, freelancing, and more. In the film and video category alone, there are classes on editing, cinematography, and do-it-yourself filming. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. If learning about animation or any other topic interests you, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Now that we've covered his kicking techniques, it seems like a great moment to explore his shooting skills. In short, Hunter is an excellent shooter. From wielding assault rifle type weapons, to pistol type, to even dual wielding, he's extremely accurate. It goes without saying that with him being a highly trained clone trooper with enhanced senses, he is no doubt a master at combat shooting. He can also add some flair to his technique, such as right here where he slides across the floor stunning enemies along the way. I would like to add here that this reminded me so much of Sam Gideon in the fantastic third person shooter Vanquish, as he can also slide across the floor during high octane combat. And since we're on the topic of video game characters, take a look at how he's holding his gun and knife in this shot. Remind you of another bandana wearing warrior? Indeed, his way of holding the knife and gun resembles Snake's technique in Metal Gear Solid 3. If you'd like to learn more about Snake's CQC fighting style and how it relates to real world techniques, check out how many fighting styles does Snake know in Metal Gear Solid. Returning to Hunter, speaking of CQC, does Hunter demonstrate any concepts from real world CQC systems? He does. The one which most accurately fits his style is the Israeli CQC system known as Krav Maga. Krav Maga is a simple and aggressive system of self-defense that was developed to serve in military situations and later modified for civilians. It has a comprehensive system of weapon-based attacks as well as disarms. The components of any disarm in Krav Maga are to first redirect the line of fire, then control the weapon, counterattack, and disarm. Now let's take a look at how Hunter does just that. In this situation, he redirects the line of fire and controls the weapon by lowering it off and to the side. And at the same time that he's doing that, he also throws a counterattack in the form of a strong elbow strike. This is yet another concept of Krav Maga, where you always try to defend and attack at the same time. He also executes those concepts in this disarm, but the difference is that he uses a weapon as a melee striking tool. Using your firearm as a striking tool is very common in Krav Maga. Elbows are an important component of Krav Maga due to the fact that they can be executed from very up close. Hunter uses them frequently when he finds himself in this situation. And since Krav Maga does have its foundation in boxing techniques, Hunter will sometimes throw a hook, as seen here. Krav Maga also uses techniques that may be considered a bit unorthodox, such as a headbutt. The headbutt is by no means unique to Krav Maga, as is also seen in martial arts like Muay Moran and Lethwei. But in Hunter's case, it works well to group it with his skills in Krav Maga. This flying knee strike will be attributed to Muay Thai, as it's the most prominent martial art in teaching such a strike. It also connects well to his aforementioned skills in Krav Maga, as both favor using elbow strikes in their repertoire. A unique case to examine in Hunter's fighting style is this situation right here. He is trying to keep this gun out of the line of fire while also preventing an overhead stab. In order to disarm her, he simply uses his own strength against hers. By applying enough pressure to her wrist with simple grip strength, it causes his opponent enough pain to drop the knife. 
He turns around and does the same with the other hand, causing her to drop the gun. You can tell he was using pure strength as note how he is trembling with the amount of power he is putting into that grip. This is very different from this wrist lock. He has successfully withstood this electrified whip and reaches out to grab his opponent's wrist. He then twists it to the side in a position that causes extreme discomfort, making him drop the whip. This is the principle behind every wrist lock, and wrist locks are extremely common not only in Krav Maga, but Judo and even self-defense portions of Taekwondo, lining up well with Hunter's fighting background so far. And now it's time to discuss perhaps his most used weapon in the entire series, and that is his trusty knife. He is truly beyond a master with said weapon, knowing not only how to dodge incoming attacks, but to wield it in such a way that it seems like an extension of his own body. He slashes, lunges, strikes, pierces, and absolutely destroys his enemies with said weapon, and is even capable of dual wielding knives with no loss of effectiveness. He can even throw them as well. There are plenty of arts that include knife training, but Kali, also known as Arnis or as Grima, fits best with Hunter style, as it is a weapons-based combat system with a huge emphasis on knife work. It frequently includes knife throwing as part of its training, working great with Hunter skills. As a small aside here, I need to add that whenever he pounces with said knife, his character also reminds me of the phenomenal beat-em-up games Shank and Shank 2. Ninjutsu is an art with 18 distinct disciplines, and if you'd like to see an in-depth breakdown of each one, you could check out my fighting styles video on Arkham Batman. In Hunter's case, he is a master in stealth tactics, as he is often required to lead a team to infiltrate a base without being detected. He is able to execute such a feat due to his skills in Shinobi Iri, or the art of stealth and infiltration within ninjutsu. He is also an expert in Boryaku, which translates to military strategies. We get to see this in most episodes where he leads his team, and especially when the Bad Batch takes out a platoon of droids in Season 7 of Clone Wars. He also is shown to be proficient in explosives or kayakujutsu, such as when he perfectly timed and threw this device to take out the transport his opponent was using. In conclusion, how many fighting styles does Hunter know in Star Wars The Bad Batch? They are Judo, Taekwondo, Combat Shooting, Krav Maga, Muay Thai, Kali, Shinobi Iri, Boryaku, and Kayakujutsu, bringing his grand total to 9 fighting styles. This episode of Fighting Styles was sponsored by Skillshare. I'd like to thank each one of my Patreon members as their contribution helped in the making of this video. If you'd like to contribute and appear in the credits in the future, my Patreon page is Godzilla Rex and it's in the description below. Which fighter would you like to see analyzed next? Let me know in the comments below and remember to hit that subscribe button to be notified when the next video premieres. Thanks for watching and see you next time.